Hey gang, in today's video, I'm gonna answer some questions from some subscribers that leave comments on some of our videos. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about ways to use dietary supplements in a way that helps you assimilate the nutrients in those supplements the best. And we're also gonna talk about, is there a detoxification benefit that can come from using ox bile or tudka? Let's jump in. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So if you have a question that you want me to cover in an upcoming video, just put it in the comments section below this video and we'll see if we can get that in there. So over on our five steps to improve bile flow video, Cameron asks, please do a video on how to properly digest supplements that come in capsules, gel caps, etc., as well as powders. Thanks. So when we're looking at supplements and how to get the most out of them, we have to look at different types of supplements. So the first thing you want to think about is minerals, and, and minerals tend to need that digestive action going to really assimilate the nutrients in those supplements. So minerals go in better when they're taken with food and you have that digestive action going, it helps you assimilate those minerals a little bit better. So that can be an important factor. But with a lot of vitamins, you don't need that digestive action going on. They'll just go right in. But there are different types of vitamins. There's water-soluble vitamins that those go in pretty easily. But then there's also fat-soluble vitamins that sound just like what they sound like. You know, you need some fats going on to really assimilate those effectively. And those are the A, E, D, and K vitamins. Those are the ones that are fat soluble and that could benefit from consuming them with some fats. And that can be a little bit more beneficial. Now, the reality is that when you're taking any type of supplements, some people have digestion that's so poor that they can't even break down a capsule or a gel cap or something like that. So if a person is dealing with a lot of digestive symptoms, they really could benefit from maybe like opening up a capsule or poking a hole in a gel cap and squeezing it in some water and dumping that powder into some water and then drinking it that way until they can take some steps to improve digestion enough that they can actually break down a, a capsule and actually get the nutrients out of that supplement. So that's just something to think about if someone is dealing with a lot of digestive symptoms. Now, if you're using like HCL to improve digestion, you would not want to open that capsule and dump it into water because then you're drinking that HCL and the HCL is coating your esophagus and that feel, you know, it can be kind of like heartburn. You wouldn't want to do that. And kind of on that same topic, you know, a lot of the digestive supplements that we talk about in, in my books and courses and things like that, those you would obviously want to take with a meal because they're there to help digest that meal. And we talk a lot about taking HCL in the middle of the meal so you're at least chasing it with food and it doesn't get stuck in your esophagus and stuff. I kind of go into that in my book a lot. Um, chapters three and four talk a lot about how to use those digestive supplements specifically. So if you're a little bit lost on that, I'll put the link in the description below so you can get my book, Kick Your Fat in the Nuts, totally for free. But you know, one thing that does seem to confuse people a lot is we talk a lot about um, beet flow from empirical labs that we use to help thin out bile so that bile will flow better. Um, but beet flow doesn't actually need to be taken with the meal. It's not helping you digest that meal at that moment. Beet flow kind of works over time to thin out the bile so that bile can flow naturally, and then your body knows when to use that bile. It gets triggered during that meal process, when the acidic food leaves the stomach, that's when the gallbladder is triggered to squirt that bile down there. So the beet flow doesn't actually need to be taken with a meal, and that kind of surprises a lot of people. And uh, probiotics, when it comes to probiotics, you really want to take those away from a meal, and that will get more benefits from those probiotics. You want them kind of going through when the stomach is not at its most acidic state. And as far as powders go, you know, the idea is that you should be able to assimilate the nutrients in those powders easier than you would, you know, something in a food or a, a capsule state. But a lot of the powders are just not great in quality, and you're not getting a whole lot out of them anyway. So I don't want you to view that as magic. Um, but when you put something in a water and dissolve it, it should be it should go in a little bit easier, especially if somebody's dealing with digestive issues. I just don't use a whole lot of powders for my clients. I don't have a whole lot of them out there that I really like a whole lot. So let's cover our next question where Minerva asked over on our how to use ox bile and tudka the right way video. 
So Tutka has no detoxification effect. Please expound further the detoxification effect of ox bile. And on this video, we talk a lot about the timing of when to use ox bile or Tudka. And if, if you're using either of those, you really want to watch that video. And we'll put the link in the description below because the timing of when to use those could vary a little bit from person to person. But it's really the most important aspect of when you're taking something like ox bile or Tudka. And though bile is said to be antimicrobial and it can help to kill out bad guys in there, I sort of feel that that might just be the alkalinity of the bile that's helping it do that. Um, and I don't actually view Tudka or ox bile as having detoxification benefits. They don't have a detox effect on the body. Bile itself I view as very detoxing because... The liver filters toxins and junk out of the body and then it puts it into the bile so that when the bile is going through that intestinal tract, it's carrying those toxins with it so then the toxins can go out the back door when we poop like a champion. So that's the main detox pathway for the body. So that's why we want bile to flow correctly so that we can detox that way. I don't view supplementing with ox bile or tudka as helping to detox really. They do have the ability to improve your ability to process fats correctly and if it helps that then you're not going to give the body all these undigested fats that become a burden that the body has to deal with and now it's having to deal with these undigested fats and that takes away its efforts from detoxing other areas so that could be a benefit in that way but i view more improving bile flow so that the body can detox the way that it wants to detox that's the real benefit, not actually taking ox bile to give a detox benefit. Now, if somebody isn't producing enough bile, which is a little bit more rare, that's not as common as someone's bile becoming too thick and sticky to flow correctly. But if they're not producing enough, they could take ox bile and that would stimulate the body to make more bile and that could have a detoxification effect. So that could be a benefit in some of those rare cases. But it seems more important to thin the bile out and get it flowing when it's not flowing right and that's the real detox benefit. So if you feel like, is that a problem for me? I don't even know. Why don't you jump over right now and check out our video on 10 signs of poor bile flow to see if any of those things are showing up for you and, and maybe you need to take steps to thin your bile. All right, let us know how it goes.